Uh, hi, I'm Jerry Marshke. Uh, I'm a, a labor economist at SUNY Albany, economist at SUNY Albany that specializes in labor. And um, uh, what I want to do is talk about some results from a, a, the first paper that uh, uh, RAPID has generated. So we received an NSF RAPID about a year ago to study the impact of COVID on STEM workers and also uh, consider policies that might attenuate the effects of the COVID-19 recession on STEM workers. So what we've done so far is describe the effect of COVID-19 on STEM workers. So let me start though um, uh, with some administrative work. I wanna read quickly a disclaimer and, and acknowledge that um, any opinions, findings and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this material are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation and the National Bureau of Economic Research. The findings and conclusions in this paper are those of the authors and should not be construed to represent any official USDA or US government determination or policy. All results have been reviewed to ensure that no confidential information is disclosed. And uh, as this is funded by the NSF, uh, we'd like to thank the NSF uh, for funding this project and also for Kick uh, for inviting us to present this material. So this is uh, based on a paper that we just um, uh, published as an MBR working paper. Uh, it's downloadable if you're interested in the full details. I'm just going to present a subset of the work that we did there. And this is done with Jim Davis, who's now at the USDA, Holden Deathorn, and Andrew Wong, who are economists uh, at, the, at the Bureau, the National Bureau of Economic Research. Um, okay, so uh, we're focusing on the STEM workforce. Why is the STEM workforce interesting? Interesting during a recession or a pandemic like this? Well, the STEM workforce is a key segment of the workforce. Uh, in that it, it affects uh, research and development and therefore it affects economic growth. And it is a you know, policy focus of much uh, education and uh, job policy in the United States. So uh, what we're interested in here in this paper is uh, understanding the effect of the Great Recession, the COVID recession on the STEM workforce and comparing its effect to the non-STEM workforce. Uh, and um, and then what we find, to give you a preview of what we find, we find that the STEM workforce has done relatively well uh, during the COVID recession. This recession has been terrible for employment generally. Uh, the uh, disemployment effect of the COVID recession is about twice as what it was uh, during the Great Recession 10 years ago. Um, uh, although the recovery has been much quicker, but the recovery is still not complete, as you're aware. So the uh, preview, to give you a partial preview of the results, it turns out STEM workers have done fairly well in comparison. They've been hit by the recession, but not in the same way that non-STEM workers have been hit. And then another focus of this paper is to, to understand well, what accounts for the relative resiliency of STEM workers. And you might think, well, it's their education, or it might be that they're in occupations where you, know, you can do your, your work remotely. It's not those things. It turns out that uh, neither um, education levels or ability to work remotely or a concentration in essential industries uh, explains this resilience. Okay, um, so there's been a fair amount of work. Actually, this work started coming out almost at the beginning of the recession uh, in, uh, in, in, I think, May and June, we saw the first papers uh, by economists who were looking at the disemployment effects of COVID and where it's concentrated. And the general consensus has been that the job losses have been concentrated amongst workers who are uh, less educated, skilled, and wealthy. And, and th those workers tend to be in occupations with more face-to-face -face contact and less ability to work remotely. And then there's another older and larger literature on the effects of education on employment outcomes during recessions. Uh, and that, um, that, that work has generally found, not surprisingly, that better educated workers suffer less employment loss and earnings loss during recessions. And then there's been some work this looked at uh, the effects of particular kinds of education on uh, recession resiliency. Uh, and this work has shown that workers, at least college graduates who uh, graduated with degrees in higher skilled disciplines had better labor market outcomes during uh, and just after economic downturns compared to uh, college graduates who graduated with degrees in, in quote, softer uh, disciplines. But there's not been any work, there are very little work done on STEM workers. Okay, so these plots, I'm gonna show you two sets of plots, one regarding the Great Recession and the other one regarding COVID. So this is a, 
employment, these are the effects of the Great Recession on employment. And what we're plotting here on the left-hand side uh, is a ratio of uh, COVID employment, employment uh, and each quarter since the beginning of the pandemic relative to what it was uh, during its peak prior to the recession in this case, and then in the COVID graphs prior to the COVID pandemic. And you can see that, um, uh, let me tell you what you see. You see that overall we get about a, a 7% decline in employment compared to the peak prior to the Great Recession, a 4% drop for STEM workers and about 7% uh, for non-STEM workers. And I'll talk about the output uh, graphs in a second. And then this is the, these are the results for COVID. You see that um, uh, STEM employment fell about 5% relative to its peak prior to COVID. The employment you can see is bottoming out in, um, if you look at the horizontal axis that corresponds to quarter since uh, the pre-recession peak and the pre-recession peak is about the fourth quarter of 2019. So uh, employment is bottom, bottoming out or disemployment is at its apex in about uh, in, the, in the second quarter of 2020 on the first, first quarter of the pandemic. And then for uh, non-STEM employment, uh, um, the employment rate, employment um, to uh, peak employment ratio is about uh, 86%. So they, their employment falls by about 14%. And then afterwards, you can see uh, a rapid uh, increase in employment. For non-STEM workers, uh, we're, still, uh, we're still in a, in a deficit situation. The employment is less than it was before. Uh, COVID began for STEM workers, uh, we are back to quote, normal. And then on the right hand side in both uh, slides, I have the output. And what I'm interested in here is understanding the extent to which firms are hoarding workers and whether that is different for STEM workers versus non-STEM workers. Hoarding workers is where the employers hold on to workers uh, for when the economy bounces back. So for example, if they have training investments that they wanna protect. And there's no evidence of hoarding um, during the Great Recession, but for the COVID recession, there is evidence of hoarding of STEM workers, not non-STEM workers. Their uh, employment falls by more than actually output falls in a non-STEM worker intensive industry. But in STEM worker intensive industries, uh, STEM employment, employment is falling by less than uh, what output is falling by. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna look at a set of uh, workers who I captured just before the pandemic begins. This is a representative set of workers. Some of them will be STEM workers and some of them will be non-STEM workers. And the STEM workers in my sample, this is the current population survey sample from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's monthly data on a set of workers who I first captured just before COVID hits. Uh, what I'm interested in doing is seeing to what extent, you know, it's demographics, to what extent it's uh, the industries that workers are in and to what extent it's occupational characteristics and so on that explains the fact that STEM workers enjoy a 9% employment advantage compared to non-STEM workers. That is their employment falls by 9% less than non-STEM workers. So I'm gonna look at things like demographic characteristics and educational characteristics and some job characteristics, which I wanna describe quickly now. So this slide shows you the differences between STEM and non-STEM workers in terms of educational attainment, demographics, uh, firm size, the size of the employer uh, that, that uh, employs the worker, and the educational requirements of the job as opposed to educational attainment. So one thing I, I'll point out is that uh, STEM workers are half as likely as non-STEM workers to be female, Black, or Hispanic. And uh, they're much more likely, about three times more likely than non-STEM workers to be Asian. Um, their educational levels are very different. Uh, college, uh, the STEM, STEM workers, about 70% of STEM workers have a college degree or better than a college degree. And about only 30% of non-STEM workers have a college degree or better than a college degree. And they also tend to be in different industries. So here's the distribution of STEM and non-STEM workers across, uh, um, across industries. Um, and you can see that STEM workers, that's the, the red, the, the red um, those are the red um, rectangles. Uh, you can see they're concentrated in professional, scientific, and technical services. And uh, they're also seen in manufacturing. And non-STEM workers, uh, you see a lot of them in, in uh, retail and a lot of them in, in uh, um, accommodation and food service. Industries that were hit very hard 
uh, by the pandemic. So that's gonna be part of the story. Now it turns out, so as I said, there's a literature which shows that you know, the re remote work capacity of the occupation is important in, in explaining variation in the disemployment of COVID. And if you look at workers who are in STEM versus workers who are non-STEM, you see a big difference between uh, remote work capacity of STEM workers and non-STEM workers. So non-STEM workers are more likely to be in jobs that require physical activities and close personal proximity to coworkers and customers and so forth. Uh, and as a consequence, their remote ability is much less than the remote ability, if I could use that word, uh, for STEM workers. And they tend to be, interestingly, the STEM workers tend to be in industries that have not been deemed politically as essential. Uh, so that works against STEM workers and in favor of non-STEM workers, but remote ability works in favor of uh, STEM workers. And then if you look at the types of tasks that workers are engaged in, so there's a, a large literature in uh, economics that shows that uh, workers in, ta in jobs where the tasks are routine and non-cognitive tend to do worse in recessions and recoveries. And uh, it turns out that STEM workers are not in those kinds of jobs. They're in, typically in jobs that require tasks that are cognitive and non-routine. And then the last thing I wanna show you before I show you the decomposition is that uh, as you might imagine, if you're a STEM worker, STEM knowledge use is important in your employment, in your every, uh, everyday work. Uh, and here's the, the distribution of the importantness of uh, different kinds of STEM knowledge in, uh, in executing tasks on the job for STEM workers and non-STEM workers. And you can see that although there's some overlap, and that's interesting, a lot of non-STEM workers actually are using STEM knowledge of one kind or another on the job. STEM workers tend to be using more STEM knowledge on the job than non-STEM workers. Okay, now what we're interested in here finally is the, a decomposition of this difference, the nine percentage point employment advantage of STEM workers compared to non-STEM workers during COVID. We're interested in seeing if we can explain that in terms of the characteristics of the worker and the characteristics of the job. And so in the interest of time, I won't, go through this figure, I'm just going to summarize it in the next uh, slide. So I'm looking at uh, bullet points two and three. If I divide up the sample between college educated and non-college educated workers, I get different results. So for college educated STEM workers, and that's the bulk of the STEM workers or the STEM workforce, it turns out, and maybe this isn't surprising, but STEM knowledge use on the job explains about half of the advantage so if you are in a job that requires ex extensive use of STEM knowledge, you are in a sense protected. And what's interesting about that result is that's also true for non-STEM workers. So a lot of non-STEM workers, about 70 million non-STEM workers are in fact in jobs that require some STEM knowledge use. Uh, those workers are protected too from the, um, uh, from the recession in terms of their employment. And then for, uh, non-college educated workers, it's a whole host of things that matter. Non-routine cognitive tasks, composition of jobs matters for whether they're hit by the uh, COVID, COVID uh, recession hard or not. Demographics are important and, and which industry you're in is also important. And then the last thing I wanna say is that we're looking at STEM workers. Some STEM workers do R&D, many don't. All R&D workers, almost all R&D workers are STEM workers. Those are important workers because they say they have a disproportionate effect on economic growth rates and productivity increases in industry. And it turns out that R&D expenditures and R&D employment and patenting didn't take much of a hit during, uh, during COVID. In fact, uh, although they fell, those three variables fell in the first two quarters of the pandemic, they didn't fall as much as uh, even this uh, STEM employment did. Thank you.